The Mac Observer's Mac Geek Gab, episode 679, for Monday, October 16th, 2017. <laughs> Mac Observer's Mac Geek Gab, the show where you send in your tips, questions, and cool stuff found. We share them all. We try to answer questions as they come in, with the goal being that every single one of us learns at least four new things every single time we get together. Sponsors for this episode include Otherworld Computing at MacSales.com and their new USB-C dock. We'll talk more about that a little bit later. And Stamps.com where coupon code or promo code MGG gets you a four-week trial, a bunch of postage included, a postage meter, or postage scale, I should say. All this great stuff. We'll talk more about that in a moment, too. Here in Durham, New Hampshire, I'm Dave Hamilton. And here in what I believe is rather chilly for this time of year, Fairfield, Connecticut, this is John F. Braun. And here in another part of Durham... With Dave Hamilton as Pilot Pete. Thanks for having me back, guys. I Thanks got for coming back. Yeah. Uh, well, one. how's the weather in your part of Durham? No. Uh, <laughs> you said we have to learn four new things. Is there going to be a test at the end? Or? Uh, yeah, there, there will be this mm-hmm. test of life. That's right. The yeah. test of life. Yeah. That's <laughs> yeah. really what it is, is we're, we learn new things here so that when stuff happens out there, uh, you know, we're ready. That's yeah. sort of the, uh, that's the goal. Yeah. But Pete, we moved our schedule for you. I appreciate it more than we you honestly guys did know. I gotta uh, tell dave you, and i were I, talking I it's like well we're coming we... here to do this and and man sundays were just eating me alive between the kids and church yeah, and yeah. family and well, you're uh, and your fans are uh, are going wild man the fans Seriously, went wild both yeah. of them i, I saw right. at least one <laughs> post saying <laughs> all both more pete so my wife and my daughter to me, that's a mandate right <laughs> there pete. there you go hey we got some quick tips to run through i'm curious to see how quickly we run through them uh, the first thing I wanted to point out, though, was that in the uh, camera now in iOS 11. So no matter what um, what phone you have, I believe this works as long as it runs iOS 11. If you aim the camera at a QR code and tap that code, you will get a little notification down at the top with the contents of that code. And if it's a URL, you can tap that and link to it. And otherwise, it, it'll put it on your clipboard if you want it to, uh, which I thought was pretty handy. Finally, we get, you know, Baked in, easy to access QR code support. Um, so there you go. Did you know that, John? I did because in the past you would have to search far and wide for a barcode scanning app, and there's yep. almost too many of them. And I guess QR code is. A, do, do you know if there are any other symbologies? Uh, QR code is probably the most popular. That that's the only one that most I know of us of. see, which yeah. has the three square anchors. It's you know, it's a two D. Uh, right. It's black and white amazing thing. the amount of information yeah and in a few black dots <laughs> yeah it's pretty cool yeah, it is cool well yeah. i haven't done some barcode stuff pete what what amazes me is that a lot of these designs that where you see all the dots and stuff is right. that they're redundant and that if part of it is damaged it will still right. scan because right. that's part of the strategy for uh-huh. designing them so yeah. kiwi graham in the chat room asks uh, at macgeekgab.com slash stream of course uh does it do barcode lookup near as I can tell? No, I have not had it do that. Um, but, uh, but I, I could barcode look up in what identifying the type of barcode. Well, no, just translating the, the contents of the barcode. Like if you scan, for example, a barcode on a FedEx package, it will translate to the, uh, the, the tracking, tracking number, number of yeah. that FedEx package. Right. So, and there's an app that you can use for that. I use an app called Deliveries from JuneCloud.com. Awesome, awesome app. Tracks my uh, deliveries, syncs between all my devices. I can even access it from my Mac. Oh, okay. So, yeah. I mean, the native apps for the most part, so USPS, FedEx, and UPS, all of their apps, last I checked, will scan their own barcodes and then save it in their database so you can... Right, but I don't want to run it. UPS's app and FedEx's app and USPS. Yeah, so you can find one app. I want, right. I want one. Yeah, I get it. Yeah, yeah. And then, it, as long as you're talking apps, there's another one that's really cool called Crafter, with it spelled with a Q, Q-R-A-F-T-E-R. Okay. And like you use Q-R-R. that to craft or make your own 
uh-huh. QR codes. So you can set up your QR code on your business card that, you know, has either your email address or your phone number or, in fact, all of your contact information, if you like. Nice. So, yeah. That, I that, still have. I like sadly, that. it's gone now. But did you guys ever use something called Red Laser? I yeah. did. I haven't seen that in a while. I yeah. guess it, well, the thing is, I think it got acquired and pulled. But if you still have it in your database. But, but the thing is, it did. It was pretty comprehensive in that if it saw a barcode, it, even if it didn't, it couldn't decode it. It's like, oh, yeah, this is a code 128, which is used for this sort of application. I was hmm. like, wow, that's useful. Kind that's of like cool. what you're suggesting. Cool. I don't know if there's yet a universal barcode scanning app, but it's nice to have it in the camera. <laughs> cool. Bill brings us to the next quick tip. Bill says, uh, by accident today, while searching my MacBook Air for a document named free, I came across something cool. If you search in Spotlight for free, uh, it will open system information to its storage window. Uh, one that I didn't know existed. He says the window shows how you are using your storage in several categories and gives you options for iCloud storage and such to optimize by removing removing viewed shows from iTunes and a few and a view of documents. Uh, it initially shows large files. So, yeah, so this is actually pretty interesting if in uh, and I believe this is only high Sierra. I'm going to make sure of that because I'm on a non high Sierra machine right now uh, because I don't. Yeah, to, my, like, mine's showing it, and I'm not on high Sierra. You're not. Okay. All right. So there you go. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's right. It's there in Sierra too. Um, so this you can get there by going to Apple menu about this Mac, and then click Storage Manage. At least that's how I'm doing it on Sierra. But uh, but high Sierra it might be a different path. But it will show you, uh, like uh, like Bill says, it'll show you some recommendations, and then it also shows you what's using all your storage. It's kind of like using Omni disk sweeper or one of those apps to scan your disk and find all the large files kind of like that. It doesn't scan everything. So don't rely solely on this, but it's certainly a place to find some large things like in your apps folder or your documents folder. And uh, it's pretty handy to, to find all this stuff and manage it. If you are running clean, my Mac, it hacks into this and adds some options called like there's one called system junk i think that will appear here which threw me off a couple of weeks ago when i looked in here and yeah. saw like what is system junk apple wouldn't call something system junk and it, <laughs> and it actually would take a really long time for this window to come up because uh clean my mac was doing all this extra stuff in sure. the background uh, yep but it then showed you more information so uh, you know that uh, is cool yeah 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 so very cool and i had to search for <laughs> free space i think on my mac yes. because the word free wasn't unique enough to surface that but free space did it for me so you may ask yourself where have i seen that window before dave and i'll yes. tell you where you've seen that window before if you go to about this mac storage manage that's the same window that comes right. up though yeah. that's what we just said to them we, we just told them that yeah, I was just following that path while you were babbling. So sorry, <laughs> but just to uh, confirm that. But it's a uh, but it's cool how they anticipate. Oh well, if you're searching for the word free, yeah, maybe you're concerned about the free space on your puny little hard and drive, and it brings you right to it, which is great. <laughs> yeah, it's cool. yeah, or maybe large hard drive, but uh, yeah. Then of course this feature helps you well, clean up your ass, and it's like, well, yeah, where am I wasting all my space? Right. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Exactly. Very nice. Cool. All right. Thank you, Bill. Uh, Jeff has a quick tip for us. I had no idea. He says, while snapping pictures using the camera app on my Apple watch, I found I could zoom in and out by turning the digital crown and observe the results of such action right there on the watch. Pretty awesome. That is cool. Uh, yeah. And a lot of people don't even know that maybe what you're talking about. I only found out probably three months ago so that you can use the camera app on your watch to take selfies from across the room that yep. look like a selfie, you know, family portraits, that kind of stuff. That's right. Yeah. 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 Good point. Yeah. That's right. Yep. Yep. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Um, we're going to talk about some high Sierra stuff in this episode, but one request or question that we've gotten so much recently is I need to reinstall Sierra. Where do I download the installer? And the answer is nowhere official right now. And that's pretty, what? That's so if pretty you go to the common. app store and you search for Sierra, it's not there? Nope. 
It sure ain't. It might come back. You can go find El Capitan if you've got it in your uh, purchased list. But Sierra, you cannot. Um, there's there's a page for it that does not link to anything at the moment. So and this I believe this happened last time around, too. So it might come back. But as of right now, you can't go download the, the Sierra installer from Apple. So you either have to, you know, find some nefarious source online that that might have posted it. And then, you know, your mileage may vary or uh, find a friend that has it, uh, you know, because really the thing and the, the quick tip here is save your Mac OS installers. Anytime I download an OS for the first time from the app store, what it does and, and this happened uh, and will happen for those of you that are uh, doing it with High Sierra. It downloads install Mac OS to your uh, uh, to your applications folder. And then it immediately launches that. And then you go through the install process. And once you're done with the install process, it usually sometimes it doesn't. But usually it deletes the installer app from your applications folder. So once it's installed, it's gone because it's, you know, like four gigs or five gigs. You don't and need it. You don't need it. Right. It frees up, frees up all that space. Before I click through to let it reboot for that install, I go to my applications folder and I either save that app off to an external drive or to my NAS or something like that. And and then it and then it lives there. And that way, when, you know, I need to reinstall something down the road, I just run it now. That means I'm left with the, you know, point zero version of the installer, not the up to date one. Uh, if I think about it before a new OS is released, I might go to the store and re-download and get like the latest version of the installer or the last version of the installer. But um, but at least you have something that way. So just go go get it. Go get High Sierra right now so that you have it. Um, I suppose oh, I was going to say there's no Mac that can only run Sierra, but not High Sierra, right? High Sierra runs on every Mac that Sierra runs on, which That's is probably why the company C which is probably was well, there. A, well, I'm going to, I'll say what I'm going to say. And then I'm going to question oh. your, your, your comment. Um, that's probably why Sierra is not downloadable because there's no Mac that needs it because it can't go to high Sierra, right, but compatible. right. Everything yeah. is yes. Compatible. Uh, at least that's the company line. As Mr. Braun said, what's is, is there something that doesn't run high Sierra that should? Oh no. Oh, okay. No, I'm just, uh, conspiracy theory oh like okay tin yeah tin hat hat. got it what yes. i will no, say good. though is that there have been people that i've been working with and and we have you know a few more high sierra questions here but one thing you may want to note to see if things have changed is when you get the installer do a get info and you're going to see a version and i've noticed so for example the 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 install mac os sierra uh, mac install mac os high sierra that got it out um it says version 13.0.66. And I'm like, that's cool. The thing is, that's not the version of the original one that I installed a while ago. And if you recall, they've released a couple of, or at least one official update. Hmm. But keep your eye on that version number. And um, because they did advertise in the most recent update, Dave, uh, that they, they worded it nicely. It was like uh, addresses installer issues, which basically mean that we, we tried to fix problems that people had installing High Sierra. <laughs> right, 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 right. Right. And the update may do it, but but keep in mind that when you download the installer, um, and that this, this kind of irked me because when I looked on the uh, App Store screen, the version that they showed was not the version that you see in the Finder. I don't know why they're different. I don't think they should be, but they are, at least a casual inspection that I did. But very good advice. Yep. I have, I back to Lion, I have installers. Oh, same. I've got it. Yeah, I've got them at least that far I got back. Lion, Yosemite, yep. Mountain Lion, El Capitan Mavericks here. And, um, and another thing to add to that, Dave, is if you want to be a developer or you just want access to all operating systems going back to the beginning of time, oh. on the Mac, be a developer. 99 bucks. And then you get, you can find the Sierra. Does the developer... Um, Last I checked, Repo the developer a... site has, um, and, and it differs. Sometimes it'll make it a purchase in your app store. Sometimes they give you a, a, a key code yeah. or an activation code, and you just download a generic thing. But that's another thing to keep in mind. I mean, for me, Dave, the value of the, uh, one of the values for me as a 
you know, budding developer is that you have access to almost all tools and everything that they've made ever, ever. I think you can even get the first version of Mac OS X. Huh. If you're a developer and you have a, and you have a developer account. I, I do. Oh, yeah, we have to because we have the Mac Geek Ab app, which you should all go get. Now, I don't sure. know if downloading that and using it for non-development purposes is necessarily within the... Uh, just a lead, uh, I'm not a lawyer. We, we know plenty. And, sure. Uh, we'll refer you if you need them, but... Um, <laughs> <laughs> Happily. Yeah. I don't know if that's necessarily a, a encouraged use of the developer program, but nobody's been knocking on my door. Lately, yeah, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh. All right. I'm looking to see if... The same Sierra. with Microsoft. When I when I did Microsoft development, the Microsoft Developer Network, you could get back to Windows 3.1 or even prior because you may need it. I don't know that I'm seeing Sierra here. I see what Sierra was. They, they change their menu structure. It gets wacky sometimes. Or you may have to re-agree to a developer agreement to see everything. It's a Probably not something to do right now. No, I'm I'm looking in there. I don't see okay. Sierra. I mean, I, yeah, I could be missing it. I mean, I am doing a podcast at the moment, so that's possible. But um, but I don't see it there. I will put a link in the show notes for anyone that wants to download El Capitan because you can do that if you get in through the knowledge base uh, article link. So there you go. All right. And then I think we'll call this one last quick tip, although I bet we've got some other quick tips that are going to come up in the show. Uh, Todd, based on last week's show, we talked a lot about AirPods and Todd said in iOS 11, Apple introduced a new option for AirPods that you guys didn't mention. You can customize the left and right tap controls uh, inside the Bluetooth setting. So you go to Bluetooth. You, you find your AirPods and hit the little I next to it uh, for info. And then in there, you get the normal disconnect and forget this device things. But then you can name your AirPods and you can control what happens when you double tap on the left or the right one. And you can have different things assigned to both. So you can have play pause on one Siri on another next song, those kinds of things. So it's worth going and uh, messing around in there. You can also set which microphone it uses or any of that stuff. It looks like they need to be connected in order to do that, though. Not just, I just went into iOS and uh, Bluetooth. Yeah. And I, I saw, I tapped on the eye next to my AirPods and the only option was forget the device, but I don't have them connected right now. Oh. Which brings me to a question. Does either of you know, well, probably you don't, John, if you don't have any, could you loan your AirPods to somebody? Because I tried to the other day to my sister and it didn't want to pair up with her phone. Is there something you have to do to back them out uh, you even know though my bluetooth was off we've talked about that at home because i uh, as i mentioned last week i tend to lose mine occasionally <laughs> and lisa has a, a pair and she said do you know do you want to borrow mine i'm like no and the reason i always say no is because Isn't it seems like oh, no 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 <laughs> no, no, no. It, it, well, i mean it, you do have to worry about yeah, yeah. ceremony and all that stuff yeah. but uh the uh, ceremony is earwax uh, kids but uh the um probably not worried like, about that with your wife re, right re, well if she's got an ear infection or i <laughs> well, do that, i yeah. mean and that's a problem yeah um but uh yeah i i don't know what like how i would go about pairing them to my phone without like i'm worried that i would get them paired to my devices and then it would you know unpair them from all of hers right right because right. it with with apple you can pair them you can hit the little blue, the button on the case, and that puts them into like normal standard Bluetooth pairing mode. Oh, nice. For, be, yeah, because otherwise Android folks would have no way of being able to pair True. to AirPods. So maybe if you did it that way, they would pair as sort of dumb devices and not just sync throughout iCloud because that's what they do. Right. Once you pair them to your phone, instantly your, your iPad and your Mac and your Apple Watch are all paired with them, too. Look at that. There's a button on the case, Dave. <laughs> See that, Pete? That's a bonus tip. There's one of your four. <laughs> there you go. Um, you yeah, press and, the button? Yeah, John in the chat room is saying uh, they'll still sync and do all that yeah, stuff. So, okay. yeah, there's a button. Well, yeah. I think I just turned on the White House Christmas tree lights with that button. But Good. Yeah. Oh, that's good. They, they need them. No idea what that fine. button does. No, right. I got to go research it. No, that's the, that turns yeah. on Bluetooth pair. That's cool. That's okay. what it does. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. yeah. good stuff. Yeah, it's, it's right. That's why we do this show. Hey, you know why else we do this show, John? 
because we have stellar, stellar listeners. And I want to take this moment to thank all of our premium subscribers that contributed uh, throughout the week. And and while we're doing it, I also want to thank every one of you that has migrated your account over. Uh, for those of you that needed to do that, uh, we're like it. Most of you have done this already. And I'm I'm frankly blown away that that you are all like happy and willing to to deal with this for us. So thank you so much. Uh, this week in the monthly ten dollar plan, James C, Joe S, R E L, Paul M, J C, Gary B, Jeffrey P, and John V have all uh, contributed, and thank you very much. And then in the twenty five dollars every six month plan, we've got Rob W, Andy D, Willie M, Willie M, that is not William, although it might be William M, could be. Either way, whatever you like. Uh, Gary B, George C, Jed E, Steve R, and Patrick C. Thank you so much to all of you. You rock. It really, I know I say it every week and I mean it. It means a lot. So that's why we do this, John. That's that's really the big reason why we do this. But and if you didn't do this, our beloved listeners, we couldn't do this. It's so. It's totally true. Or yeah. make it muscle much less likely. <laughs> Far less likely. Willingly. Yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> It's not like our arms are being twisted, John. We do enjoy this. So, um, but but it, the fact that we're, we're able to spend the time and do this every week is is a privilege, and we thank you for that privilege. Um, I want to talk, John, now about crack, and and I mean the whoa the, whoa. The, when did we get into like public policy? <laughs> yeah, I know. Crack geek like hey, man, you know? isn't that a problem up in New Hampshire? Oh no, that's no, that's it's, it's heroin that's a problem here. <laughs> Uh, it's, it's actually not. Well, a you're not talking matter. about crack, the uh, the addictive uh, with a K uh, substance. You're crack with about. a K and all capital letters. K R A C K. My, what could this be? I have never. Yes, I've heard of it. Yeah. Go, so lead us, please. So it's um, crack is a. Uh, it came out today, or it was announced today. It's actually been um, uh, known since May. Um, and the versions of the white paper haven't changed all that much, although they became public today. Crack is describes a vulnerability in WPA2 Wi-Fi encryption. Now, uh, just to be clear, WPA2 is the Wi-Fi encryption that every modern router and device use. Uh, it, Better use. Right. That's what, And that's the that's the part that's awful about this is. You know, we've been saying for so long, just make sure you're on WPA2 and then all your Wi-Fi traffic is encrypted. And well, no, that's what we've been saying. Oh, I think it's. Keep we going. Have, I've, I've okay. read up on what this involves and I, I, I can equate it to a prior Mac based exploit. But um, but it is a concern because it. it, it continue and then I'll, I'll add my commentary. Okay. So your commentary was about something I'm about to say, not what I did say. I, I just wanted to, cause we have, right. we've been telling everybody use WPA to everything secure. Well, if you have a choice, it, it's not the worst thing to do. It's actually the best thing to do. Otherwise right. your, your, your traffic is absolutely unencrypted and in the clear and, and people will steal it and do bad things to you. Maybe. Right. Well, potentially. Yeah. Um, so what happens with, with crack in a, or what happens with WPA two in a very, uh, sort of quick top level explanation is there is an exchange, a key exchange, and it's actually a four way exchange uh, where your router or the router, the access point and the client device, i.e. your Mac or your iPhone uh, do this exchange to sync up the uh, encryption key. So th for that connection, everything is, is unique and all good. Step three of that four step process has a hole in it where someone can fairly easily and trivially inject a new key into the process that will then be used by both sides. And when someone injects a key, it's safe to assume they might be able to uh, then decrypt what is sent across that line because that's what the key is used for. So when you've got a third party with that key, uh, because they created it and injected it into this stream that goes back and forth uh, during the negotiation, then your Wi-Fi is encrypted, but someone can read it. So the uh, where this becomes an it, and it has only been proven in the lab, but it's proven very trivially. The good news is 
Not only does this white paper describe the problem, it describes a solution. The bad news is that every single Wi-Fi access point out there will need to be updated uh, in order for this solution to, to be implemented uh, at this point, uh, And we're doing this on Monday, the 16th in the evening, I believe uh, Aruba and ubiquity are the only companies that have released patches for their uh, routers slash access points to, to protect against this. My guess it, because the, the fix is so clear and and already documented and described. My guess is that within the next month, we will see most vendors release updates for most of their hardware uh, to do this. So it hasn't been seen in the wild yet, but it's pretty uh, it's pretty okay. easy to do. And, All right. And so and it's it's something to I... take. You, you give me a minute. I, let me get to the end and then okay. and then Go you ahead. can have it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's pretty easy for people to 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 implement this hack. Thankfully, it's also pretty easy for vendors to implement the patch for it. And uh, and so we should see this out there. Pay attention to updates for your router and make sure you apply them, uh, especially if the release notes say that it, it fixes this. Where you really need to be careful is not at your home, because if someone is in your home or close enough to your home to inject uh, a packet in there, you might have other problems. <laughs> Um, but at coffee shops and things like that, you know, our advice has always been use a VPN there, which encrypts all of your traffic tunneled through so that even the person who owns the coffee shop can't see it. Even if they plug something in, you know, Ethernet into the router um, that you still want to do that. So that hasn't changed. Yes, Mr. Braun, the floor is yours. OK. Um, first, your comment um, I, I just want to qualify your comments so we don't freak people out, but you, you, you made a statement that this has been done in the lab, and I, I think you made a statement suggesting that it's relatively easy to do what I'd call a man-in-the-middle attack. That, that's that's the, a, a good, quick description of this. Sure. Okay. Yeah. All right. Have, have you personally executed such an attack with, with the tools available to do so? No, I have no, no okay. desire to do that. All right. All right. No, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm just saying I, I, I don't want to freak people out, but I don't want people to be unconcerned. So, right. right. You should be concerned about this. And and but again, if you're on a public Wi-Fi network and you don't know who controls it, you have to assume that all of your traffic is being, you know, sniffed and recorded anyway, because even with yeah. even with this patched, you're. Like it's right. only good between it over the air. Once it gets to the other end, i.e. the router or the access point, people, whoever runs right. that could sniff that traffic. Now, this your HTTPS is all still encrypted. This is it, this is something different. Correct. Yeah. If it's HTTPS or iMessage, which is end to end encrypted as well, you don't have a problem. Right. Right. So this is very low level. Well, this is, I don't know, transport later. Transport later. Yeah. yeah. We'll That's call right. it. It's at a very low level and yeah. it's happening on the Wi Fi's. But as you point out correctly, Pete, if you have other encryption like HTTPS or a VPN, right? right. Which I think you mentioned, Dave. Yep. Then you're okay. So if you have another layer of encryption, this is not a big concern. What this reminds me of, Dave, do, do you remember back in the heady days of 2014 when they had something called Go To Fail? Yes, of course. I'm old enough to remember and that. And when you told me about this bug, or, or I read up on it very yeah. quickly, I, I heard mutterings of it, but it's the same, almost the same sort of thing, is that it's a unreported failure, coding failure, and protocol failure in the encryption software. GoToFail was a failure in Apple's HTTP implementation where somebody skipped a part of code that was supposed to say, hey, wait, this isn't right. right. Yep, that's right. And that's what's happening, yeah. I think, in this case, too, is that there's a part of the SSL, or, or I'm sorry, the WPA2 code that I'm almost certain suffered from the same thing. Is Somebody just skipped this step saying, whoa, whoa, this isn't right. And it just marches merrily along saying, yeah, this is good. We're, we're fine. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Yeah. And the user doesn't know. And that's, you know, a, a, a fish shake at the developers for not having an error saying um, something's not right here. They, right. they just continue on because the code proceeding said everything's great go ahead <laughs> right yeah 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 so i don't want to put people in a panic but um 
I guess if anything, I guess the recommendation would be use an additional layer of encryption if you can at all do that. And that's right. It'll be good. Yeah. And, and if you're having to do something highly sensitive, I assume like, you know, transfer all your money to a, a friend in the Congo or something along those lines, you could always use your telephone uh, data mm-hmm. if you're out in public, I would say. That's you know, true. In, in yes. That way we, you're, yes. Now you're off everybody's network, so yep. to speak. Well, but, you're only yeah. on your provider's yeah, network. So to speak. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, two things. Number one, Pete pointed out uh, in our back channel here that VPNs are only as secure as far as trust as you trust the provider of the VPN. Right. So, right. I, you know, there you go. Like, yeah, if, so run yeah, your I own was reading VPN. about one where a guy got arrested because the VPN people provided their key to authorities. Who <laughs> sure. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> because yeah, they yeah. can. <laughs> because, they, because they can if they if they want. Right. right. So run your own VPN or, uh, you know, use one that that you trust. Um, yeah. And that that thank you for the reminder on yeah. that, Pete. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. yeah. and, uh, and then in the chat room, uh, Brian Monroe notes that Microtick has also released a patch for this on their also, so everybody that's released patches so far, Aruba, Ubiquity, and uh, Microtik are all basically enterprise level stuff. I know Ubiquity has some consumer level stuff. The Amplify mesh system is theirs. I don't, I, I don't think there's an update for the Amplify yet. I think the updates are for their, their, their enterprise grade stuff. But uh, it wouldn't. I mean, it's, it's all going to be I coming mean, very quickly. Yeah. I mean, I guess the order. good news, Dave, is that it sounds like. Anyone who's anyone that implemented WPA2 did so from a now recognized flawed common code base. Yes. Well, w- yes, that's right. WPA2 and is And that everybody took standard. the official WPA2 code, or you would hope that they did. So hopefully the fix should be deployed. Well, it's the standard. They followed the... Right. I, I, don't, I don't know that... I don't think they would all have used exactly the same code base, but they followed the same... Uh, just the same definition of the protocol and that right. by the, it's the protocol itself that well, has know. the it bug still in it. It sounds to me like a coding error, you know? No, that, that's thing. where it's worth reading up on this. It's, it's actually an error in the standard uh, that needs to be patched. It allows this. So the it, standard did not dictate a certain. Correct. A, a certain level to be of taken to assure security of the key exchange. Correct. Oh. Correct. Correct. That's the problem. That's why everything is affected. It's not just like, well, people that used, you know, Timmy version two code uh, are affected. And that's, you know, right. Linksys and so and so. Wow. You would think these things would be subject to peer review. And people oh, they are. View this and, we, uh, and we've yeah. for years, yeah. we've thought <laughs> WPA2 was safe. But well, I've been fooling still, you all all these years. Yeah, Pete, well, it still is as far as you kids. know. <laughs> um, as far as I know, it's safe. I mean, well, I, I know that it's not because I've I've read up on this. It, you can choose to say whatever you want, but it it's th- there is a hole in it. Yes. Oh, yeah. Well, everything. The, has holes. the other interesting thing in this article that I'm reading about, it says that uh, not just your router, but all your devices need to be updated with the security patches because it's a, it's the two way issue. It, it's the, a two way issue. It, yes. Yeah. Updating the yeah. routers. It solves Start, starts a huge, a, a huge yeah. amount of it. But yeah. it, there is still a the possibility of of an attack. And it's a once. it's a fun question because, you know, in the echo sphere of devices that have software on them, how many even bother to let you update the firmware? I'm, I'm thinking more, you know, I mean, IoT is all the rage as far as, sure. you know, security scales, right? Yep. scares right now and people are like well how do i update the firmware on my you know brand x you know light switch it's like well I don't Mo- know what you, do. you know most <laughs> of the new can people give iot devices a bad rap for this um and and well i think the landscape is is varied in that you got good people you right know, nest and you know well maybe they're not good but but they're you got major vendors deploying iot and then you have these you know kind of I wouldn't worry about any IoT device that you bought in the last three years. Okay. Uh, well, because it's new, and so it like the it's they were they're built to be updated. It very few of these things are just you know hardwired. They all are using the, the very standard chipsets and things. So updating the firmware right. on those things, I wouldn't. I wouldn't see as a problem. I mean, you need to pay attention and go, go get it when it comes out. Cause you might not be alerted to it and you need to stop and think about what devices do I have that use Wi-Fi and, and all of that. 
Where I would really worry is your, you know, five to 10 year old printer that supports WPA2. Because <laughs> I guarantee those aren't going to be updated. No, not even. I, I mean, yeah. like that, that's where these holes are big time for me is, is those kinds of things where it's like, yeah, I keep this device around forever because who cares? My, it's just a printer. What's the worst case threat of someone being able to inject something through your printer, though? I mean, someone really, I mean, NSA level expertise sure. can get in and mess up your or infiltrate They'll print your entire network. X-rated pictures on your printer and ha ha. Yeah, really what it is is they can <laughs> yeah, they can right. see the traffic going between, at, at the very least, between your router and that, de- that one device. Right. Okay. And then depending on how secure your router is, your router may let all the other traffic be seen that way okay. or it might not. But but, yeah, they're just seeing traffic. It's not like by doing this, they can hack into your Mac's file sharing unless you send your file sharing credentials, you know, in an uh, unsecured, unencrypted rather email to someone. And you're sending that email in the clear and not over a TLS connection or something like that, which for most of us, isn't going to happen. You're probably not encrypting your email unless you know that you are. But even then, your email is being sent over a link that's also encrypted separately from your Wi-Fi link. So it's, it's yeah. you're right. It's This isn't like, mm-hmm. you know, light our hair on fire and, and run in the streets panic mode. But it's like, yeah, this needs but to be fixed. The worst part if you is have... it's the convoluted nature of it. What's encrypted, what's not anymore. Right, <laughs> right. So I think the the... Closing message here is that if you have a vendor that makes Wi-Fi stuff, go to their website and see if they have a firmware update. Maybe they'll tell you. Yep. I mean, a lot yep. of the equipment I have says, hey, there's an update because there's something wrong. All right. Not, you may have to search for it on your own. And actually, that can be quite painful, Dave. I found with certain vendors finding Definitely. firmware updates if they do, if they even exist. So, uh well, join our, our Mac Geek Up group on Facebook. Go to macgeekup.com slash Facebook. And if you're having trouble finding a uh, the firmware for a device uh, post there. We've got a lot of very, very uh, good and very, very smart people that, that follow along in that group. And we're all happy to help each other. So it's good stuff. Uh, I want to, we have some cool stuff found to go through John, but, um, but the first thing that I want to do is, or the next thing I should say that I want to mm-hmm. do is I want to talk about our, uh, our sponsors that work for you. Outstanding. All right. Our first sponsor today is stamps.com. I'm going to tell you right out of the gate, go to stamps.com before you do anything else. Click on the radio microphone at the top of the homepage and type in M G G that gets you up to 110 bucks worth of supplies, postage and a digital scale and a four week trial of stamps.com's awesome service in the old days. I.e. like yesterday, if you aren't using stamps.com already, businesses would use a postage meter, right? Problem with the postage meter is expensive ink. It's archaic technology. You're in a long term contract. No, stamps.com fraction of the cost, way more functionality and no learn long term contract. Uh, you get discounts on your postage there. I needed to send out even just like a, a letter that was priority mail. I got a discount on that for using stamps.com. And here's the best part I did it all right here at my desk. I went online to stamps.com. I chose that I wanted to send it that way because I actually wanted to send it priority, but you can send anything you can do at the post office. Uh, You want to do, you know, certified mail. You want to do regular mail, anything, whatever you want to do, whatever you can do at the post office, you can do on stamps.com. So I chose that. I have the scale, right? It's USB into my computer. I put the thing on there to make sure it wasn't more, even though that's flat rate, I did it anyway because it's cool to have the scale and use it. Sure enough, it said, yep, that's great. Here's the price. I paid it and I printed the label and I put it on there and I gave it to the mailman. It's amazing how well it works. You got to check it out. It's so good. So easy. And you can totally do this at home. And then you get to avoid the lines at the post office or you can bring it to the post office if you like the lines. But at least you've printed your postage and gotten your discount at home. Right. Check it out. As I said, stamps.com. First things first, you click on the radio microphone, you put in MGG, that's stamps.com, enter MGG, never go to the post office again, get some discounts, get a four-week trial, 
Our thanks to Stamps.com for sponsoring this episode. Our second sponsor for today is Otherworld Computing at MaxSales.com. They've got their new USB-C travel dock. They just launched this product a few weeks ago, and it, they've had a huge response to it. What it is, is the perfect little thing for any USB-C MacBook, much more compact and portable than the Thunderbolt 3 dock, and also very affordable at $49.99. It's a cool little kind of puck-sized thing. Two USB 3.1 Gen 1 ports. USB-C auxiliary power up to 60 watts, an SD card reader, an HDMI 2 port supports up to 4K resolution up to 4096 by 2160. It's available in four colors, $49.99. Very cool. You need RAM? OWC's got RAM. You need SSDs? OWC's got SSDs. Whatever you need to expand your computer, OWC is the first place I go. You got to check it out. Visit MacSales.com. Make sure you let them know Mac Geekab sent you. That way they know that you're listening. And we appreciate that. They appreciate it. It's good for all of us. Our thanks to OWC for sponsoring this episode. All right. Now it's time for some cool stuff found. Are we ready for cool stuff found, John? I'm never ready, but... <laughs> Hit me. All right. Uh, the first one comes from Tannel, who uh, who says, some time ago, a listener wrote and asked about note-taking software that would sync, but not over the cloud, as his employer did not allow it. I don't remember this app, but there is DevonThink. It allows a number of ways for syncing and can also do direct over Wi-Fi syncing between the Mac and your iPhone and iPad. Devin thinks been around for at least as long as Evernote, uh, possibly even longer. If my memory serves me well, he says, uh, I have been back and forth between Devin think and Evernote for a long time. And since Devin think did not have cloud syncing until recently, I kind of use both apps together. Now that Devin think has cloud syncing via Dropbox or an arbitrary web dev server, I am now exclusively on Devin think. Uh, and he, he, he talked a little bit more about how he migrated over. It'll import your Evernote stuff. And it is pretty cool to uh, to be able to control your own sync engine so that you're not syncing with someone else's cloud because Evernote data is actually stored unencrypted uh, at rest. It's transmitted encrypted per the last uh, discussion we had about crack, but uh, but it's stored unencrypted so that they can do searching and things like that. Um, so there you go. That's Devin Think. Um, one question I had for Tannel about Devin Think, and I don't know that we've heard back yet, is whether or not you can share a specific notebook with someone else. Like I know I can sync my notebooks amongst all my devices, but for like what we do, John, we have a Mac geek Ab notebook that has all of the questions for the week in it. And those sorts of things that, that we share. Uh, I would, I, if we were going to move to something like Devin think I'd want to be able to preserve that functionality. So that was my, that was my question for Tannel or anyone else that knows I couldn't, easily tell on their on their website so would that be a good replacement for uh notebook for notebook from circus ponies which yeah. doesn't exist which it died. might be for circus pony died yeah i guess when ringling brothers went out of business or something but, mm -hmm. um yeah yeah because i you know i'm still using it but i know it's going to be end of life before too much longer and all my notes right right from, for sure yeah keep meeting minutes and all that for my job yep. at work. oh yeah 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 yeah. Um, I'll look at it. So I, you, and I'll you, toss into the ring here. Go ahead. Um, Devon also. So, you know, I've never quite, I guess, uh, grokked their tools. I've used them in the past, but the only thing I'll mention is that they do have a number of free applications. And yeah, as pointed out, they've been in business like forever. Right. Um, but they do have some things that I've come across in, in researching questions for listeners. And they do have, a freebie called Easy Find, which is uh, looks to be uh, so, so they have very powerful backend software that well it finds things, right. locates things because oh, that's what they yeah, do. Yeah. So they got one called Easy Find, they got one called Photo Sticky, Thumbs Up, X Menu, uh, uh, like four of them, and we'll link to them because we want to do that for you. But um, yeah, a, a great member of the community, but I've they haven't they haven't got a mention from us in a while. No, so it's, it's true. It's good that. Yeah, yeah, we do because it's just again the, the the what they do is not on our radar. I guess they're they're into like big data. And well, stuff, it is now. Right? There you go, back on the radar. <laughs> I like it. Um, 
so we've talked about devices in the past that uh, that can sit on your network and monitor for when uh, either you have an attack coming in or having an attack, have an attack going out. And we've talked about how some routers will do this now. Um, you can buy a, an Eero plus subscription if I have that terminology yeah right. they keep reminding you of that when i run the app yeah right Isn't you can funny you can buy the, the <laughs> subscription for that the the um tp link deco router has the, or mesh has that built into it but it's also a router um and there's and there's various ways of doing it but if you're running a router that doesn't have that functionality or you want something more or more controllable there are companies coming out with standalone devices and one that i've been looking at lately is called cujo at getcujo.com. They, nice. they, what, yeah, that's right. They, they call it a smart firewall. It's a device that sits on your network and monitors everything that's going on there. The way it works best is if you let it set itself up as your, um, as your gateway. So what would happen? And, and we talked about this when you talked or about that bit defender. Do you box. mean your router or your gate? All right. So similar to what I looked at. So it wants to have it wants primary to have control of your network. It wants to have all of your network traffic flowing through. It wants it. to be the router. It wants to have all your network traffic flowing through it. It is not your router. Your oh. router remains your router. Um, it, so you could do some. Uh, go on. I'm, I'm, I'm intrigued now because that's a. Yeah, it, it basically, approach. right. It's a slightly different approach, although it can be used the way the Bitdefender box was, where it's truly in between uh, your router and whatever lives upstream of that. The way it's built to work is you just plug it in with one Ethernet port to your router, much like you would, say, your Apple TV or you know, any other device that would that would just be Etherneted into your router or a switch on your network. And then it wants to essentially have your router turn off its DHCP server so that the um, so that the Cujo can hand out uh, addresses for everything on your network. And the reason it does that is to then route traffic through it so it can see everything that's happening. And um, and it, it it it's so would it, you call it then active very active rather or rather than being something that you hang off of your network, which I believe we've heard of such devices that'll then maybe at some point in the future say, Hey, I saw something bad. This is in real time. Like the right. other things we looked at looking at your traffic and if something bad happens, then uh, okay, that's correct. Just, yeah. Just wanted to no, that's it. right. And, yeah. uh, and it's got gigabit ethernet in it. I was able to pass traffic uh, through this thing at over 500 megabits a second. So I don't think it's going to slow you down. Um, it, you know, it, it runs well. Don't gloat. I'm sorry. What's that? <laughs> what, am I, what am I gloating about? Oh, my internet speeds. Well, well I needed to have fast you internet You gave me speeds. the screenshot of your internet speeds like <laughs> yesterday or yeah. today. And I'm like, dude, why are you doing this? Yeah, I know. I know. I had to do it. So at the risk it. of asking you how to build a wristwatch, how does it, how does it work for the wired items on your net so everything it is not a wireless device so every okay. it is only wired in okay so it's a wired firewall. so the ports on it are as fire, follows hardware firewall essentially <clears throat> it's a hardware firewall that you you have to make sure you are routing all your traffic through okay. it it does its level best to to make sure that's happening for you it's it's basically so is it, built to is set, it like what i level. worked with um, yes you know except for the speeds all right so it's power and two ethernet ports in and out is that no. Yes. So it has two Ethernet ports. Most people will only use one of them. It just mm. hangs off your network like a printer or an Apple TV. And and everything goes through that Ethernet cable twice. In Data goes into it and comes out. Now, you can use the other Ethernet port to go um, downstream to something else. And and I've tested it that way, too. And it it works fine. Um it, it, it's 200 and 249 bucks, I think, is the uh, is the price. I want to make sure I have that right, because I think I had it. Yeah, it's 249 bucks, no subscription fees, and uh, it just sits on your network. I, I've been it, it's hard for me to this is why I left this in cool stuff found and not, you know, a more formal review or anything, hmm. because I can't. I already know my network. I already have everything in place to protect myself 
it's hard for me to test a device like this and be wowed by it because it's not going to do anything that I want done. That's not already being done on my network. If that makes sense by perhaps another tool. Yeah. But you've got a little bit of technical expertise. That's what I'm saying. We set these things up anyway. Correct. I've, I've already done all the heavy lifting. The nice part about this is you pay 250 bucks. You plug this device in it for the most part, will reconfigure your network for you. And I will say this, their support is proactive. I, I plugged this thing in. It saw what I had on my network and said, you have to go through a manual support process because it saw that I already had things doing this job. And it said, you need to call uh, Cujo. Now, I did this yesterday on a Sunday. Uh, you have oh. to call Cujo to set it up. And I thought, OK, first of all, it's Sunday. And secondly, I was going to do this while I was watching the Patriots game. I had a bunch of stuff to go through. And it's perfect for me because I can sort of, you know, half watch football game or whatever. And, it, you know, and, and then focus on this stuff. I thought, all right, well, I'll call them later. 30 seconds later, my phone rang <laughs> and it was a support rep from Cujo saying, hey, I'm here to help you set it up. And it was like at first I was a little annoyed because I was like, I, I actually didn't want to do this right now. I, I had already made that decision, but he was very nice. And, and he explained it to me. I told him, I said, I don't have a lot of time. Um, I had plenty of time, but I, I didn't want to spend a lot of time on the phone. Um, I said, oh, that was you, the rep from Cujo with a K and you gave him all your passwords. Well, Not to worry that, though, that Dave, was, you're probably <laughs> that, right. That, that was interesting. It was yeah. like, you know, is this, Wait the, a minute. Is the, this the Microsoft yeah. tech support wow. rep calling? Yeah. But, um, but I, I said, look, you know, I know a lot about networks. Can you give me the, you know, the distilled version and he's like, yeah, it's reading your ARP table. It's seeing this. It's doing that. If you want to use it the way you want to test it, he's like, use both Ethernet ports, run it as a path through pass through on one of your other wireless networks. And that way you can control it without it completely, you know, taking over your network. I'm like, all right. Sweet. Thanks, man. <laughs> we <laughs> the were fact off the phone that I understood seconds. what you said to me in Geek Speak. I, I want to give these guys like three thumbs up. Yeah. In no, that, their support you was got, great. Yeah, well, you got, well uh, you got a tech support person. So a lot of times you have to wrestle with tech support to get to level one or two or three or whatever. Correct. You explain to him, you know what you're doing. And immediately all the barriers came down because what you said is what I'd want to hear from a very good experienced tech support person. And that, look, I understand steps one through 10. I need 11 because. Yep. That's all I need is I, all I've I need done, is 11 and 12. One that's through it. 10. You know what they are. I know what they are. Don't waste my time. I don't want to waste your time. And he's like, okay, we're, we'll bring you to 11, which yep. is what he really did. You know, he really <laughs> he did. did. Yeah, he was great. He was great. So outstanding. So so you got a, a, a revised configuration. I did. Correct. Yeah. Cool. And uh, and and it, it it really is like if you. If you don't already have something on your network that's doing this, uh, it will look at all the traffic that's there. Like I said, I can't sit here and tell you it's going to find all the vulnerabilities that they say it's going to find because I don't have any of those on my network at the moment. Um, so, I, you know, I, it's hard. It's hard for me to to review it other than to say set up. But I'm is with great. you. Like when I test great. another product, Dave, yeah. I try, I intentionally have a bookmark to a site that has a unsecure form submission right. on a web page. And I'm like, let me see if this product identifies yeah. it. And it didn't. And I'm like, well, you said you detected insecure blah, blah. And they're like, oh, yeah. well, but not that. And I'm like, well, okay. <laughs> so I, I said we were going to do this as a cool stuff found and not a review, which means going quickly and and in my own mind, spending less than 10 minutes on it. And so we're at nine. So we're going to move on. But I'm happy to answer questions about it. And I'll, of course, leave a link in the show notes. Uh, another similar device, but but actually quite a bit different is this device called the E blocker and the E blocker similarly sits on your network. Um, and only protects your browsing traffic. And it actually does this by putting like a little browsing bar up on your, um, up on your, 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 your you know, in your browser. Okay. Like so it, is it not a box? Like what you it's a box. It's a box. Oh, it is a box, but a specific box. It's a specific box only for browsing. And, um, it, honestly, it, you know, it, I don't consider this cool stuff found. I consider it like it's priced 
very similarly to the Cujo. It's 219 for one, essentially one configuration that everybody in your house shares or 249. Sorry, did I say 119? 219 for one shared user that everybody or one configuration that everybody shares. And then 249, 30 bucks more for 10 profiles that you can assign to different devices. But it only protects browsing. And I I like I'd had some people asking about it, which is why I wanted to include it in this discussion. If you're going to do something like this, it seems to me like the the Cujo or or things like that are a much that protect your entire network and all of your traffic as opposed to just your browsing. Um, the eBlocker wouldn't do SSL sites out of the box. You have to install its certificate on your uh, on your Mac because otherwise it can't see what's inside there. So, yeah, I, like, hmm, I don't know. Well, I'll play devil's advocate sure. to say that most data that is disclosed is probably done while people are browsing mm-hmm. with a browser with phishing attempts, right? Right, but right? it's not going to tell you if your webcam just joined a botnet attack, which the Cujo, in right. theory, could. Okay, well, because it's it's network-wide and Correct. specific. But, um, Correct. Correct. But again, now, the point is, here's here's yeah. the cool thing. This is there is a yeah. cool part to e-blocker. Right. So, I, so, so I get the focus of it. So if you're only concerned about browsing security, cool. Right. But yes. here, here's Otherwise, the cool part about it is 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 what we want. Are you? Uh, oh, yes. I, there is something cool. I'm eager to tell, talk about it. You can set up e-blocker OS on your own Raspberry Pi. So you and you can download it for free and then you'd pay a, a license to use it just like you would if you bought an eBlocker. Uh, so if you have a Raspberry Pi and you want to run this thing, you can download eBlocker OS and install it on that. And uh, and off you go. And there's a link in the in the show notes for that, too. So which is pretty cool. I like that, you know. Right. No. Did I lose Mr. Braun? Oh, no. We're oh, here. OK. All right, cool. I'm just I'm letting you talk. Got it. All right. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> I want to talk over you. Too much. <laughs> I deserve and that. I and I do have a Raspberry Pi. I know it's all somewhere around here shows. and I may actually find out what it does or reprogram it. So, uh, yeah. But yeah, embedded embedded development is. Uh, yeah. Is the yeah. And what it's blocking for somebody in the chat room asked, wouldn't open DNS do the same thing? No, this does more than that. It looks at the content and the resources loaded by the website. So it will block trackers. It will block uh, ads and things like that. And it will let you do it on all your devices uh, as opposed to just those where you install some software to do it. But yeah, it could, it, a lot of this think, could be done with software. But I think the difference is that open DNS looks at where you're going. Right. That's it. And this looks at what you're doing doing correct so they're almost complimentary well no you yeah they, they make a hole right yeah we want to get that in here that's right but um yeah. the thing is you can you you can focus your attempts or you can open it up but it doesn't hurt as we talked about in the past they have multiple right that's right secure yeah. yourself whether it be vpn or intrusion detection i don't talk about watch bands a lot on this show um, and that's because by and large, there's one watch band uh, for the Apple watch that impresses me and that I use most of the time. And that's the one from, uh, from hello nomad. Uh, they've got, I think they just call it the band. I, I always confuse this when I, when I, I go in there, um, Apple watch strap, they call it, I think. Yeah. It's, it's the, uh, the strap and they've got a couple of them actually. Now the leather one is the one that, that I really love from those guys. It's, it's just awesome. However, I got one this week that I thought was going to be just a kind of a joke and it's not at all a joke. And it's the X Doria action band. It's a rubber band for the watch. It, the, it, it's two pieces but the way it locks in, if it started to come off, it wouldn't come off. It, it it's it's very well engineered. Oh, look at that latch! I, I can the just way see it latches, on their web page. They're like, "Hey, look at this innovative angled thing." Yep. And it's like, oh, I get why they do that. <laughs> it, it's got this <laughs> latch nice. that really like buttons in. But even if that were to come out, it still wouldn't unlock 
because uh, the the way that it all fits together, it, like you have to really work to it's not hard, but you have to be intentional about pulling this thing off. And it's lightweight. They've got it in a couple of different colors and uh, it's, you know, sporty and and I, I really liked it. Twenty five bucks. So I'll the put material? a link to that. What's the material there? Uh, rubber. No. Oh, all yeah. right. So yeah. Shouldn't uh, annoy most people. No, no, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the colors I have to. What One thing I have to say that the one that I got. Psychedelic. Man. Well, they, they look What's psychedelic the on the website. <laughs> um, it, what you'll see is you'll see a, a different color on the inside of the band versus the outside, which is very obvious when they're showing you these bands on the web because they're not on someone's wrist. Once it goes on your wrist. The, the colors become much more subdued because you're not seeing the color on the inside all that much. It's it's aiming at your wrist. So it it's it's actually it, it, it works out. I like them. So, yeah, there you go. So uh, that's that's my uh, that's my uh, that's my watch band thing. I got a couple more. Good. Yeah. I'm, yeah. Okay. I'm willing to listen. All right. Yeah, I got uh, nothing right now. So go the, um, you know, I'm, I'm a fan of, of listening to music wherever I am. And, uh, I, but I, it needs to sound good. And then all the cool stuff out uh, comes after that. And JBL with their pulse three speaker, which is no surprise. The third uh, one, uh, in there in this line delivers awesome sound. And they really finally got, the concept with, with the first pulse and the second pulse. And of course, with the third one, the goal was to give you this sort of lava lamp esque view um, that moves in sync with your music. And with the first two, they sort of got there. I mean, it's it, it, it gives you that feeling, but there was a screen around it on the first ones and the, the lights weren't as bright as they could have been. And they, th okay. You, now this, is this a wired or wireless or wireless speaker? Bluetooth speaker? Yep. Only wireless, no wired. You could wire into it if you, you could wanted. Well, line in or mic in. Or yeah, I, it's got a line okay. in. But, but the but primary it's, goal is uh, Bluetooth. Bluetooth. Speaker. Yep. Okay. Thanks. It's wireless. It's waterproof. Uh, it could fall in your pool and you'd be fine, which is, I mean, like it can, Why would you it, can be, that? <laughs> it can be rained on and you would be fine. What kind of life do you live? Oh, be, you want to bring a speaker to the beach? This is it. <laughs> It's no, it's great. Oh, wait, I live near a beach. Okay. I know. Yeah. And I never thought to bring a speaker because I mean, the beach, I mean, I, I throw one of these into my suitcase when I travel. Uh, it's great to have in the hotel room because it does this like lava lamp like thing. And so it like lights up the room nicely. I, but because it's waterproof, <laughs> I can bring it into the shower with me and listen to music while I'm in the shower. It's great. So, uh, 200 bucks. You, so there mind. you go. What's that? We won't discuss shower protocol okay here. there you go there you go <laughs> just gonna step away from that <laughs> uh pilot pete last week we talked about custom fitted we did. earphones we did and, indeed and this week you showed up with something i, I did I, I went out and bought some right away i went right out to uh, amazon i put a link on there to the one the one I used. Okay. Um, and I got some Radians. Uh, they're essentially earplugs, custom molded. They come like an epoxy in two different little uh, uh, jars. Yeah. And you mix them, you cut them, cut each of those in half so you don't mix them all at once, unless you want to do both ears at the same time. I did not. Uh, then you mix them together. You got a couple minutes where you get it till it's all a uniform color. Then you start, follow the instructions that come with it, how to stick it into your ear and fold it in more and smooth it out and all that sort of thing. So I did that, but the other thing that I did, and I, I don't know where I found it, I found some instructions on the web that I kind of followed and then modified myself. What I did with my, <laughs> these I think are Skull Candy headphones that I'm okay. using, but uh, any kind of, any kind of, uh, be it cheap or expensive, uh, sorry, any kind of a cheap or expensive uh, uh, earbuds will yep. work great, in-ear earbuds, and you take that little rubber piece off, and do this before you start mixing the, uh, the epoxy ear mold, take the little rubber piece off, Get that all folded and molded into your ear, stuff it in good and far, and then take the earphone and stuff it into the molded earpiece and then sit there for the 10 minutes or so that it takes. It says 10 minutes to let it let it cure. Sure. And you want to do it. Um, do some say some people say do it with your mouth closed. Others say with your mouth open. I say if you do it with your mouth slightly open, 
you'll get a tighter seal, particularly when your mouth is closed because that, that yes. closes down the hole that's in there. So no, you get a, it, you you're get totally right about yeah. that. It, yeah. And, and I, I meant to bring this up yeah. last week when you're going to an audiologist to get molds, the same thing. They should tell you to keep your mouth open. Right. In fact, a lot of them really? will put what they call bite blocks in your mouth to yeah. keep it open. Right. Um, it, it, some of them will tell you to keep moving it during the process. Um, but if, if they don't tell you and, and they let how, you just keep it closed the whole time, you, you are at the wrong. You're not gonna, yeah, but you're how not going to get a good make, seal. You get a slightly a, larger a, ear canal with your, mar, with your mouth open. Dave, okay. uh, uh, I'm John. Just, yeah. Sideline comment is yeah. that normally most of my life, my mouth is closed and not open. So uh, why I disagree. would you take sorry. the mold? <laughs> okay. I'm sorry, John. I had to jump in on that one. <laughs> but no, I'm just thinking the physics of this. I mean, no, I, I, I value well, your what, input. What you and, don't um, want, and, and I've mm. been through this. Is, so is it better that it's larger because yes. your mouth is open? Okay, yes, correct. So you're, you're, so you're creating you're, a better seal when your mouth is closed. And also so you're you don't providing want some delta there. Yeah. That, yes. Yeah. You, and you don't Although want what, it okay. to you don't want it to unseal just because mouth. you happen to open your mouth. Right. Wow. Guys, That's I've right. learned like See? Well, four things here. right there. <laughs> well, like twelve. So okay. Um, so Pete, go. I mean, these things are. So I, I did it, and these are these are they're sold and advertised as custom molded earplugs with a, a twenty six uh, decibel reduction. I think is the average rating on them. Yeah. Um, and then there are some tan ones there that I wish I'd have seen when I was ordering mine last week because mine are blue, but tan ones are even more inconspicuous. Um, right. Right. Yeah, but then the cool thing is, so you then you pull it out of your ear. There's one little problem. There's not a hole all the way passing through the custom molded earplug so that yeah, your, it your headphones have a hole can get in, in there. Right. right. Yeah. So you're going to need that if you want to listen to your headphones. You're then going to have to take these out. And I've I tried it two different ways. I, the most effective way is take take the molded earplug, take, take the headphone out, place it in the freezer. Sit in oh. the freezer for half an hour or so. So that it's brittle. That it's brittle, and then and then I just took a drill and a mm. uh, I want to say it was a three, I think it was a three sixteenth drill bit and drilled right through straight in the yeah. in the direction that my headphone mold made it in there and then drilled right through. I got a nice brittle straight what? clean cut canal. If it's soft, it's it's going to mold and fold around it yeah. and all that. So if it's frozen, it does a better job of cutting a nice hole out there. Huh. And then I was able to. Uh, uh, you, you can take the headphones in and out of the earplugs after that. Particularly yeah, I've been seeing you brand. using them here. I mean, they, yeah. you're using them just like I would They're use great. custom fit earplugs. Yep. And you know, we've you. just... And these are 10 bucks or 11 yeah, bucks. 10 or 11 bucks. And they're yeah. probably even cheaper on some other sites I was looking Dude, around. you just... You've crossed the divide between chemical engineering and mechanical engineering. Just exactly. in this, in the, in this yeah. short exchange That's here. It's like... A little exacto knife, the drill. I know better. So I'm going to... No, I'd like that you've uh, defeated the uh, original yeah. design. Well, and here's the other yeah, cool thing that I've done, and, and I did it, wound up with it just today um, for years. And I, and because I've been around jet airplanes for 30 years now. What? My oh. hear, yeah, exactly. My hearing is what? very, very, very <laughs> frustrating. When I'm in a crowded room and my kids are talking to me, or anybody's talking to me for that matter, I find it very difficult to hear. Or I can't hear the TV if there's conversation in the background, that sort of thing. So I'm, I'm starting to get that level of hearing loss. It drives me nuts. And part of it's been for years, I know, riding around on the lawnmower and listening to music with earbuds in without properly attenuating the sound. Yep. Today I was on the lawnmower. I had the uh, music on with these in, and my volume was at about one quarter. Yeah. On the whole thing. So this the, is why I, yeah. I've been obsessed like this since I was 15. <laughs> yeah. No, seriously. There's the, the last time I had my hearing checked, which was uh, I'm 46 now. I think I was 41 or 42. It's been a little while, but they told me I had the hearing of an 18 year old. Now, I'm sure it's worse now than it was then. But, uh, you know, to be over 40 and have a doctor say that. Oh, to have that frequency. So that was judging you age. on your sensitivity and the two various frequencies. Correct. So it was a standard test. And it's yes. Like, okay. Yeah. He can hear at this. And because I'm, I'm trying to remember, I think, you know, I found one day, I mean, you know, I'm 50 plus and I think I found a audiophile thing. It was 30 K and it was like, huh? You're not going to hear 30 K. You know, but the good news is you, you never heard it. Or even 20 K. And we've had this discussion with music is like, right. 
the the range of human audible music and what you think you hear and what you want to hear. <laughs> it's technically, I mean, it, the accepted range for humans in general is from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. Um, 20K. Okay. It, so that's the high, high end, end on yeah, any but human. Mo- most people, even kids, don't hit 20. It, it's usually somewhere between 16 and 18, which is where things top out. And most adults aren't going to get much above 12 to be perfectly honest. Yeah. In fact, that's uh, probably shouldn't mention this, but that a lot of the kids are using what they call mosquito ringtones. Yes. You know, so, oh, so teachers that your don't hear, hear it. Yeah. yeah, yeah parents yeah. and teachers don't uh, hear it. They're in class texting each other. My, my kids Teacher never me, hears it. <laughs> my kid, I, about 10 years ago, I yeah. wouldn't, you know, or whatever it was that the kids got like iPhones or whatever. They're like, Hey dad, can you hear this? I'm like, yeah, of course. They're like, Oh, Dang it. It's like, you, you're a drummer. You should be deaf. I'm like, yeah, but I'm a drummer that at 14 read an article about another drummer who was deaf. And since then I've worn earplugs. I, I mean, cause I, cause I don't want to be deaf. I want to enjoy playing music. All right. Um, getting back to the Mac stuff mm-hmm. in high Sierra, bonjour is no longer a menu option in Safari, which means what? if you had a printer, or your network storage device, or anything else that you would configure with a web interface, you used to just go to the Bonjour dropdown or the Bonjour thing in the bookmarks menu, and you'd see it listed there because that's what Bonjour does. It allows things to advertise what? themselves. And You're such a jerks. The Apple took it away. Right. It ain't there. I have two things that can solve this problem for you. One mm. is an app for 99 cents in the Mac App Store called local sites. Uh, and that will, that will do this. And then uh, another one called I, which um, you might have uh, it's called iNet network scanner. And that's also available in the Mac app store. I, I don't know. It's 1499. There you go. Okay. When I looked at it on my other device, I'd bought this years ago, so I couldn't tell how much it was, but it's 1499. And that among other things will show you, uh, your Bonjour devices. So if you want more functionality than this, the iNet network scanner from Banana Glue is a great piece of software. But if all you want is to see your Bonjour stuff for 99 cents, um, that little local networks thing will put a thing in your menu bar and it'll show you stuff and you, you know, you choose it and then it opens it in Safari. So there you go. I got it, a closing thought. Yeah. <clears throat> Our friend Flame. Yeah. Yeah. So Flame shows you your Bonjour devices on your local network. And hey, you got an IP address. So there you go from Husk.org. Right. Then you could just visit it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I like it. I like it. I've used it numerous times, Dave, especially when I'm on guest. <laughs> oh, sure. Networks. Yeah. I want to see who's there. Yep. You run Flame. So Bonjour is good because it exposes your device to the network and then you could do things with it. It's bad if you're on a public network because then people can stalk you and make your life difficult. There you go. <laughs> and uh, and lastly, also for the Mac is a piece of software called Finetri. I don't know. I'm sure I'm mispronouncing that. F-E-N-E-T-R-E at, at G-E-T F-E-N-E-T dot R-E. Uh, it allows you to put anything in a picture in picture window on your Mac. So if you're on one of those, you know, conference calls and it's got the thing that wants to take over your screen, you can put that in there, but you can also put, you know, a browser window with Netflix in it or whatever you want. It doesn't matter. It's yours. You get to do it. Right. So, uh, Finetra is the French word for window. So, ha ha. See, there you go. Yeah. See, I asked you pre show if you spoke other languages and you said you didn't. See, I got to get around. I said I get around. I, so. I, we acknowledge that. That's right. In a good way. Bonjour. Yeah. So, there you go. So, that's, uh, that's the cool stuff found. I have, I, I said we had some high Sierra stuff to talk about. The really, the only thing we have time to talk about is some high Sierra apps and one tip. So, we will go through a couple of these apps and then, uh, there's actually going to be two tips in there because it's just how we work. So, um, so Pixelmator, which is, you know, for most of us far more than we'd ever need in terms of a, an image editing and manipulation app. Um, and it, for not only for my money, 
it's of course way cheaper than, uh, than Photoshop, but it's way easier to use than Photoshop. It's 30 bucks in the Mac app store. And of course they've kept it up to date, uh, with version 3.7, uh, added high Sierra support. You can launch Pixelmator now from the photos app and save your edits back to the original image. So it can, it can work like a plugin that way. It supports the he for H E I F images, you know, these folks stay on top of it. And of course it does, uh, you know, iCloud stuff, which it's always done. And, and you can sync images with your um, iPhone and uh, the Pixelmator app there. So just wanted to give a shout out to that. I use that app every day uh, and, and love it. And it's weird. We probably have never, man, well, maybe we've talked about it on the show, but it's been a while. So Pixelmator, I like literally couldn't live without it. Um, so, well, if yeah. you're going to give them a shout out, then I yes. got to give, Graphic Converter 10. Sure. Which I threw down some coin for these guys. Yep. Because they've been around like, they've been around like this since the beginning of the Mac. I don't know. No, I've looked back. I actually have paper invoices. I, I was looking through old papers. I'm like, should I shred this or should I keep it for posterity? And it's like, I got a graphic converter invoice from like 19. So did they, did they add some stuff for, um, for high Sierra? I, I don't have information on that. So right now I have Graphic Converter 10. That's their uh, their latest. But um, Okay. Okay. All right, I will cool. have to look, but I mean, dude, in the grand scheme of things, they, I mean, Graphic Converter, it's like. They oh, no, I, I was just like trying to, you know, get some things in for high Sierra, but. No, I get uh, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the, the next one that I, I had on our list, which I think we both use is iStat Menus version six came out for uh, it, along with and for High Sierra. And in addition to having support for High Sierra, they've added in quite a few uh, cool new things. They added weather. So iStat Menus is the thing that John and I keep at the tops of our screens in our menu bar. The let thing. Us, it is the thing that lets us know what our CPUs are doing, what how much RAM is being used, how much network is being used. It replaces the lights on our modems that we can't see. Uh, it's just, it's stellar, right? You can Modem. see how much disk what? space you have. Don't you remember that? We had modems with lights on them, John. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so it, it, it is that, and it always has been that version six adds um, a weather widget. So you can uh, not only see the temperature, but it, you can actually have it notify you with the forecast every morning at a certain time. You can get notifications. They've, they've added a ton of notification center support. You can get notifications when your CPU has been, say, above 50% for more than 30 seconds, which is super handy. If you've got some runaway process, uh, right? And you're, you're not necessarily paying awesome. attention. Oh, my gosh. I yeah. hadn't even seen that. Mm-hmm. Because that's there, when you want to kill it off. It's like, dude, what's wrong? There's a, yeah. a notification yeah. center Go to sleep. widget. Go to sleep. <laughs> There's a notification center widget now, which uh, will show you sort of a, a, a encapsulated view of everything that's going on with your uh, with your stuff. You can and, and then for people that have been using iStep menus for a while, you can reorder things in your drop down menus now and they've given you more colors and things like that. So um, I, I, I'm really enjoying this. And now I don't think it supported this before. I certainly didn't have this turned on. Uh it can show you the clock speed of your CPU, mm -hmm. which might not always be what the maximum is. Like your max CPU speed changes depending on how loaded it is. And of course that keeps right. hyper threading and uh, well, yeah, hyper threading. Yes. But, but just at the actual speed, the clock speed of your CPU right. is variable. It has a maximum and that's what they tell you, you know, in, when you, when you buy it, right. but, but if you don't need that, it, it actually scales back so that you're not, um, you know, you're not using any more juice than you need to. You have to install this thing called the Intel power gadget, which they will link you to. And you got we, me. We will link you to, too, but, um, <laughs> but there you go. So actually I think I stat menus at some point said, Hey, I got to do this. And can I install this Intel power tool? Thing? There you go. Power yep. gadget. I'm like, okay. Yeah. So then it, 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 I'll get back to you on that. Okay. Well, no, right. it was like, well, I can't do this thing you ask. And I'm like, well, I, I said you could. Yeah. 
Yeah, you you need to install the power gadget. And what I found was yeah. you got to reboot after you do that. And then <sighs> iStat Menus oh, is happy. Right, right. Yep. Uh, one last thing. Cool stuff found in macOS uh, High Sierra. They have something. If you go into system preferences into the sharing tab, there's something called content caching that you can turn on. What this lets you do once you turn it on is it will turn your Mac into something that previously was only available. If you had Mac OS server running, it will cache things like software updates, apps, and, and depending on what options you choose, other content on your computer. What that means is when let's say on your iPhone, you go and update the Mac geek gab app, right? That update will be saved to a Mac that you have turned uh, content caching on with. And when the next person goes to update, they won't download it from the app store. They'll download it from your content cache locally, speeding that up, saving you bandwidth. So even if you're just one person and you've got multiple iOS devices, having this type of content caching is great. If you've got multiple Macs, now your high Sierra updates will be cached, all of that stuff. You can then turn on iCloud content so that your photos and your documents and all of that stuff is also cached and is now basically syncing locally unless something needs to be uh, sent to or from the cloud. Um, you can it, in in there. It's you know, it's a system preference pane. It's the sharing pane. You've seen it before. If you hit the options button, you can choose where to store your content cache so that you don't have to store it on your boot drive. You can store it on an external disk, which uh, which is actually what I've done. And you get to see how much space is used. And that's all. You don't get to see what's in the cache. You don't get to, you can wipe the cache out, which is good if you're having some sort of a problem. But, uh, but you don't really get any granular view into what's in the cache. It's in, if you go to whatever drive it's on, it's in the library. I think it's the application support folder um, in there, but uh, you know. It's it, it, when you dig in there, you won't see anything that is recognizable. It's, everything's just got, you know, ID names or numbers associated with it. So I've turned it on. I've got like 10 gigs of stuff cached and I, I feel better about mm. it, but I haven't been able to prove that um, like an iOS update is coming from my computer versus over the cloud. It's because you've got high speed internet, Dave. I, I know. I've been trying <laughs> anyway, though, Pete. <laughs> But, but no. the important one of the important things you sta stated in there very early in that tip was uh, that that's high Sierra because I followed high you all Sierra the way only. through and then Correct. didn't find it anywhere. Yeah. I'm going, oh yeah, <laughs> it, it is available yeah. in Sierra, but you have to install macOS server to get that preference. Gotcha. Right, right, right. Because I'm so, going, huh? I don't see. My it. conclusion oh, is, no, sir, I don't like it. Why don't you like it? Well. Harking back to the days of Ren and Stimpy with the horse saying, no, sir, I don't like it. I'm uncomfortable with multiple locations having a cached data storage device. And that's all I'm going to say, right? This is one location. Well, but then you indicated that it could be shared with other people. So then we're... we're no, no, no. Other, other people on the network will use this cache. I still don't like it. And if you don't like it, Dave, Get off my lawn. I guess. Get yeah. off my lawn. I mean, I, and also, if you're listening and you don't like it, or if you do like it, or if you have a question or chip or comment, you can send an email to feedback at MacGeekGab.com. That's feedback at MacGeekGab.com. I heard it that time. Feedback at MacGeekGab.com. If you're a premium listener and uh, and you know what that is, we talked about it earlier in the show. You can learn about it at MacGeekGab.com slash premium. You can send your emails to premium at MacGeekGab.com, which uh, that is a box we make sure we attend to each and every week or more frequently. In fact, uh, post haste, post haste. There you go. Uh, you are all welcome to call us and leave us a voicemail. 224-888-GEEK, which John is. Um, he. You know Four three three five. Thank John. you, sir. Right. Someday you'll remember. And uh, we already told you about the Facebook group, so visit us over there. We'd love to see you. I'd like to thank Cashfly C A C H E F L Y dot com for providing all the bandwidth that gets the show from us to you. And uh, of course, our sponsors, Stamps.com, as we mentioned earlier. 
MGG saves you a bunch over there. You got to put that in. Otherworld Computing at MaxSales.com, as we mentioned. Smile at SmileSoftware.com. Barebones Software at Barebones.com. Eero at GetEero.com. Casper, Casper.com slash MGG. Enjoy yourselves this week, folks. Have fun. But, uh, Pete, any lasting advice before we I, I get to talk to him again? I do have one piece of advice. Now, you said there was only going to be one more quick tip, and we did it, and we were done. But I've got one more. Don't get caught. Made up.